Hello everyone. This is Kiran Gaikwad, Assistant Professor, Kelly College of Pharmacy, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry. Today we will be discussing about limit test for IR. This is a very important topic in the pharmaceutical inorganic subject. This about the limit test for IR, we will be discussing about the theory as well as in the uh, practicals. We have to perform the practical in the pharmaceutical inorganic subject as well. So, let's understand what is limit test first. So, limit test is defined as qualitative and quantitative test which is designed to identify and control small quantity of impurities which is likely to be present in the substance as well as the limit test is generally carried out to determine the inorganic impurities present in the pharmaceutical substances. Uh, so the objectives of to performing the limit test of iron is to perform and remove, report the limit test for the iron on the given sample. Whenever the sample is given to check the limit test for a particular substance, we have to perform the limit test and based on performing the limit test, we will understand the impurities, presence of impurities in the pharmaceutical substance. So let's see the requirements. What are the apparatus required for our experiment? We require Nestler cylinder, then we require a glass rod, measuring cylinder, pipette, dropper and rubber stopper. Then let's check the chemicals required. We require thioglycolic acid, iron free citric acid, specifically it is mentioned iron free, iron free citric acid because if the presence of iron is there in the citric acid or any of these chemicals, it may alter the result of the limit test. So similarly, we require iron free ammonia solution, ferric ammonium sulfate. This ferric ammonium sulfate will be used to prepare the standard solution. The sulfuric acid, sample and the litmus paper. Sample for which we have to perform the limit test and the litmus paper to check the pH. So what is the principle of the limit test for iron? Limit test of iron is based on the reaction of iron in ammoniacal solution with thioglycolic acid in the presence of citric acid to form iron thioglycolate which is pale pink to deep reddish purple in color. So whenever we perform the limit test there is a reaction takes place in that limit test. If, the, if there is a presence of iron molecules in the solution or in the sample, it will react with the thioglycolic acid and in the presence of citric acid and ammonia solution, it will give you reddish purple color. That reddish purple, purple color is nothing but the formation of ferrous thioglycolate. That ferrous thioglycolate is also called as ferrous mercaptoacetate. This is the reaction and in which you can see a Fe2 plus which is ferrous iron reacting with the thioglycolic acid and there is a complex which is formed that is ferrous thioglycolate or ferrous mercaptoacetate and that complex gives reddish purple color in the presence of ammonia solution. In addition to a forming complex with Fe2+, thioglycolic acid acts as a reducing agent and convert ferric iron to ferrous iron. As well as purple color is actually formed due to the presence of uh, ferrous mercaptoacetate which is actually formed because the presence of iron. If the iron is present in the sample then only we will get ferrous mercaptoacetate. 
and in addition to the formation of metal complex other than the iron citric acid forms ammonium citrate buffer when ammonia is added to make it alkaline in this citric acid plays the role to prevent the reaction of ferrous iron and ammonia because if the reaction takes place between the ferrous iron and ammonia then proper conformation of the content of iron would not take place what is the procedure we have to follow first we have to dissolve the sample into the specific amount of water and then we have to make up the volume in the up to the foot 40 ml and this whole procedure we have to perform in the nasal cylinder then we have to add 2 ml 20% citric acid then we have to add two drops of thioglycolic acid into the same solution then we have to add ammonia and after adding ammonia we have to check the ph by using the litmus paper and when we check the ph it should be alkaline and then we have to keep that solution aside for 5 minutes this is for the test solution we have to follow the same procedure for the standard solution the only change here is let's see preparation procedure for standard solution here we have to take 2 ml standard solution of iron instead of sample and that standard solution which will be already been prepared or you have to prepare and how we have to prepare that standard solution standard iron iron solution is prepared by using ferrous ammonium sulfate we have to take 7.022 g of ferrous ammonium sulfate and we have to dissolve that into the 25 ml of 1 mole of sulfuric acid and we have to after that we have to make up the volume till 1000 ml after taking the standard solution we have to add 2 ml 20% weighted by volume citric acid solution in that if you see we are following the same procedure add two drops of thioglycolic acid then add ammonia to make the solution alkaline and adjust the volume to 50 ml then keep us keep it aside for 5 minutes and then whenever the color will develop that color we have to check and compare the standard solution with the test solution and we have to do the observation so this is uh, the compiled procedure for the test solution and standard solution here you can see the except the first column rest procedure we have to follow in the same manner so what will be the observation so when we perform the limit test we will get the color in the standard solution and if the presence of iron will be there in the sample then also we will get the color in test solution then we have to compare the both solutions if the intensity of the color of the standard solution is more than the intensity produced by the standard uh, sample solution then that solution passes the limit test if the intensity produced by the test solution is more than the intensity of the color produced by the standard solution that that then that sample fails the limit test then uh, there are few chemicals which we used and why we are using those chemicals let's look at the reasons behind it when we use citric acid when we use citric acid citric acid as it helps in the precipitation of iron by ammonia by forming a complex with it then thioglycolic acid helps to oxidize iron to iron uh, iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus and ammonia to make the solution alkaline so this was about the uh, limit test for iron these are the references used thank you so much